الحمد لله المحمود بكل لسان المعبود في كل زمان وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ذو الفضل والإحسان وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أفضل من صلى وصام صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد My dear respected brothers, sisters, mothers, elders, all praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we send our most choicest salutations to our, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We send our most choicest salutations upon his pure family, upon his noble companions, upon his spouses and upon every believer to come till the Day of Judgment. My dear respected friends, today is maybe the, the, the final day of the month of Ramadan. Allahu Akbar. Today is the final Ramadan possibly or is it? Subhanallah, we can continue on with the spirit of Ramadan even without the month of Ramadan being with us. And this is the beauty about us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us human beings, cognizant human beings who are able to think for themselves and do what is best for ourselves in each and every passing time. Ramadan does not necessitate an abundance of worship. Just like being outside of Ramadan does not necessitate that you will live as the most sinful person. You can be who you want to be. It is just in our minds and our thoughts and part of our emotions that we are made to think that Ramadan makes us pious. Ramadan is the season to worship. The entire year is the season to worship and that is why we see <clears throat> very hopeful thoughts echoed from the actions of the Salaf, the pious predecessors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all when they said that Ramadan it coming or it going did not make a difference for us. We were who we were throughout the year. And hence, continue on with the spirit of Ramadan even after the month of Ramadan. Make Shawwal a, another stepping stone to better yourself. Subhanallah, it is the, the season of celebration. Shawwal is the season of celebration for what you've a, a, accomplished in the month of Ramadan. And Allahu Akbar, through Shawwal, through Shawwal, you can continue on increasing in your devotion, in your good deeds. And that will take you to becoming more pious in Dhul Qa'dah and more pious in Dhul Hijjah. You know, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept Ramadan a hidden gem once a year, right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes an excuse for us at the time of Dhul Hijjah to become pious once again. But why can we not continue on with our piety Perpetually, didn't the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say that أحب الأعمال إلى الله أدومها وإن قل that the most beloved of actions to Allah subhanahu wa taala are those which are perpetual, even if they are minute. So even if you can carry on with the minute elements of what you took to in the month of Ramadan, you have done yourself an amazing favor by being steadfast and. Uh, you know, fulfilling the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for being steadfast as well. As-siyam wal-Qur'an, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says regarding the month of Ramadan, As-siyam wal-Qur'an yashfa'ani lil-abdi yawm al-qiyamah. The Qur'an and the Psalm, they will intercede on your behalf on the Day of Judgment. Yaqulu as-siyam, ay rabbi manaatuhu al-ta'am fashafi'ni fih. O oh my Lord, I prevented your slave, I pre prevented your bondsman, I prevented your bondswoman from consuming food. Hence, accept my intercession in their favor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept such an intercession. The Quran will say, مَنَعْتُهُ النَّوْمَ بِاللَّيْلِ فَشَفِّعْنِي فِيهِ The Quran will say that during the night time, this individual recited me contemplated upon me, tried to bring me into practice. Ya Allah, I deprived your slave of a comfortable, you know, thorough sleep. Hence, accept my intercession in their favor. 
And Allah, the Prophet ﷺ says, فَيَشْفَعَان or فَيُشَفَّعَان Allah will accept their intercession. Now there is no condition of the month of Ramadan mentioned in this hadith. You can continue on with fasting from time to time and you can continue on better right, to engage with the Qur'an after the month of Ramadan. Like I say, take a single juz, reflect upon the verses of how they mirror your life. And if you see in contrast of the Qur'an that you're lacking in something, use that mirror to better yourself. Allahu Akbar. Uh, we, we mentioned the hadith with regards to uh, what Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam with regards to the month of Ramadan. I mentioned the hadith last week. Let us ensure that we're not part of the group who are not forgiven in this month of Ramadan. You know, yesterday we made Khatmul Qur'an here. I was thinking about uh, doing a live stream and making dua with the community as well. But because of the time difference, I did not do so. But subhanallah, the emotions that overtook us when it came to finishing the Qur'an, when you read that last bit of Surah An-Nas, you actually are forced to comprehend, did I relive and live the Qur'an? Did I really act upon what is in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did I fulfill the, the rights of the Qur'an through introspection, recitation and contemplation, contemplating? Did I actually do that? If I have not done that, 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 then let me give a second glance to the Qur'an once again. And let me try to better myself once again through the Qur'an and contemplate, recite and practice upon the Qur'an as we ought to do. Respected friends, I apologize, I thought there was some connection issues. Umar radiallahu anhu, he was so hopeful of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala that he would say, that if I am to perform two rak'at, لو صليت rak'atain, if I were to perform two rak'ahs, and I know that they are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I wish, then I have no regrets dying after those two rak'ahs. Subhanallah, some people make their last khutbah of Ramadan about death. I'm not going to do so. Because Ramadan gives us hope. The essence of Ramadan is to burn away negativities. So why talk about death, which is a negative element, right? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that al-mawt hadimu al-lazzat. He, he told us to frequent the remembrance of death, but that's at a personal level, right? In the month of, the Ramadan, month of Ramadan gives us hope. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells his companions through hope that be perpetual. Be perpetual in your deeds. If you have severed ties, <clears throat> if you can't do it in the <coughs> month of Ramadan, at least bring about hope in your heart that you will join those ties after the month of Ramadan. Give that call to your friend on the day of Eid who you possibly harmed, or there's no talking in between you two. There's no speech in between you two. If you can bring about even that hope of saying, you know what? Maybe not Ramadan, let me focus on my final betterment on this final day of the month of Ramadan. On the day of Eid, I will call my friends, I will call my families, family members who I did not speak to. Make that effort. Even, you know, good hopes are rewarded in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aspirations are rewarded in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once you join those ties, make sure to keep those ties steady. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us through the advices that he gave the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, <coughs> he said, Ya Abdullah, to what? one of the companions you know, who, who, who is called Abdullah, or subhanAllah, this was a, uh, another uh, method, uh, another form of, another methodology that they sort of held to in hadith studies was they did not mention names. When it came to the advices of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam talking about a certain individual. <coughs> the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Ya Abdullah, لا تكن مثل فلان كان يقوم الليل ثم ترك قيام الليل 
oh, so-and-so, oh, Abdullah, don't be like so-and-so. They stand up in prayer one night, and then nights pass by, and they don't stand anymore. Is this hadith in reference to Qiyamul Layl only? No, it's not. It is in reference to any good deed, any negativity, any wrong that you undo, and you make it right. If you've undone a wrong, make sure you keep that wrong undone. If you've hurt hearts, and then you once again join those hearts again, you reconcile rifts. You join the rifts in between you and people you've harmed. Make sure those rifts remain joined. <clears throat> because at the end of the day, some of us, I would tell one of my friends who used to speak a lot, you have a loose tongue. And because of his loose tongue, his wife would complain to me. His, his children would complain to me. Actually, he didn't have children. People connected with him would complain to me. I said, just take care of this. And once you take care of this, make sure nothing negative comes out of this. Because this in itself, when you keep your good words perpetual, this in itself is a reward in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This, this is not any less than you standing up at night on a certain night and then continuing on standing uh, in, in the night prayer. This is not any less. Because in a sense, they are both equal to the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How? You kept perpetual with a good deed. Yes, abstinence from hurting is in itself a good deed. The Prophet ﷺ says clearly in a hadith, if you can't, by God, benefit anyone through your words, through your wealth, <coughs> through your physiques, you, you're, you know, you're not strong enough to benefit people, you're miser to spend, then at least benefit them by preventing them from your negativities. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, gives us this message through the month of Ramadan. You kept perpetual with good deeds, make sure you are perpetual with good deeds after the month of Ramadan. Another aspect that we engaged when it came to the month of Ramadan with is what? Spending in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many of us, we did it out of happiness. And this is amazing. Let us once again continue to spend for causes which are important to us after the month of Ramadan. We mentioned the hadith of Ifk, where Aisha radiallahu anha was accused of the most possible evil that anybody could be accused of. Abu Bakr radiallahu anha, at that time he made a promise that I won't spend on one of the, the individuals who were a part of plotting against Aisha radiallahu anha, Mistah. He was his cousin and he was also among the Sahaba radiallahu anhum who engaged in the battle of Badr, right? Defended Islam and defended Muslims with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said, I'm not going to spend on him anymore. But after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse that it does not befit somebody like Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an to not forgive and not continue spending. Let him forgive and let him spend. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu forgave Mistah and he continued to spend. Spend in what's, whatever is important to you and don't let personal conflicts. For example, you're spending for your family, you're spend, spending for your mother or your father, you're spending on behalf of your mother and your father. You know, subhanAllah, this, is, this needs to be addressed. Sometimes emotions overtake us. And even for deceased family members or possible deceased parents, we make an excuse not to spend. Oh, my mother said this and this to me when I was going to get married out of my culture. Oh, my father, he, you know, slapped me when I graduated with, uh, I don't know, less marks <laughs> or any absurd, you know, any other excuse that comes to mind. Don't let personal conflicts decrease your charitable status in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so to speak. Continue on with your charity for individuals who have possibly harmed you. Forgive them, make amends with them, and continue on with your goodness. Our excuses for preventing ourselves to spend is just another excuse to not do a good deed. And when you spend, make sure you are doing it sincerely. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَةٌ أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ those who spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who spend upon their children or their spouses, those who spend 
for their family members, those who spend for charities, وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَ And their hearts are wrenching. Their hearts are fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their hearts are aware. Allahu Akbar. Being aware is an amazing aspect as well. وَجِلَ About what? أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ That they too will be returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just as this wealth returned to whoever it was destined for. What is the reward for somebody who spends in that manner? When you're cognizant, when you're fully aware that you're spending for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that this wealth was destined for the person in front of you or for the charity in front of you, and knowing that just as this wealth parted you, you too will one day part this world and go to your maker. What is the reward for you? Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ يُجْزَوْنَ أُولَٰئِكَ يُؤْتَوْنَ أُجُورَهُمْ مَرَّتَيْنِ بِمَا صَبَرُوا These individuals will get a twofold reward. Double the reward. So is the multiplication of reward only for the month of Ramadan? No. It's outside of the month of Ramadan as well. And مَرَّتَيْن Or two times, two folds or four folds. That is just a number in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah can give you the exact same reward of the month of Ramadan. Why do we limit an abundance of reward to the month of Ramadan only? The abundance of reward is limited to your sincerity. So make the entire... Is, is it, once again, I ask, the quest, I ask the question, is it then farewell Ramadan or is it you can continue on with the spirit of the month of Ramadan outside of Ramadan? So my friends... <coughs> Make the most of it. Wahab bin Al-Ward, one of the pious predecessors <coughs> of the past, he would say, إِنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ أَلَّا يُسْبِقَكَ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَحَدٍ فَفَعَلْ Allahu Akbar. If you can do so that nobody can race you uh, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better than you, if you can do that, if you can be better than everyone and race each other when it comes to good deeds and be the best among those who do good deeds, faf'al, do that. That is why, subhanAllah, even the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, we find in the hadith, people who are less fortunate, they would always come to the Prophet sallallahu and, uh, and and they would say, you know, ذَهَبَ أَهْلَ الدُّثُورِ بِالْأُجُورِ Right? أَهْلُ الدُّثُورِ بِالْأُجُورِ The rich Sahaba have taken the lot. They, they are spending left and right in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we are not able to do so, then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would give them their own formula of good deeds. But subhanallah, when those rich sahaba radiallahu anhum would hear of that formula, they too would spend in the path of Allah, they would spend in the path of Allah as they were, and they would also uh, you know, beat those uh, less fortunate sahaba radiallahu anhum um, through good deeds with the formula given to the poor sahaba by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa so never ever think you've done enough. You know, many of us, we think, you know, Alhamdulillah, I'm praying my five times salah. Many of, the, many of us were facilitating for the masjid. Allah give you, you know, jaza'ul khair. May Allah give you a good reward. Khair al jaza, as they say in Arabic. I said it in Urdu, jaza'ul khair. Khair al jaza. But always think to yourself in a positive way. Not in a negative way so you're saddened all the time. That what I'm doing is not enough. I need to do more. My, 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 my dear respected friends, Muhammad bin Uthman, al-Turkistani, al- he was from Turkistan, he would say, مَا بَلَغَنِي عَنْ أَحَدٍ مِّنَ النَّاسِ أَنَّهُ تَعْبُدُ عِبَادَةً إِلَّا تَعَبَّدْتُ نَظِيرَهَا وَزِدْتُ عَلَيْهِ Now this is what we need to be jealous of. He says, any time I heard of people doing a certain ibadah, which was in reflection to the living tradition of the Prophet ﷺ and the Qur'an, I always did the same ibadah. I always beat them to what they were best at. Imagine what they used to compete with one another in. So even if you can do this at a family level, through incentives for your children like golden stars, or through in- incentives for your you know, spouse with ch- a box of chocolates or roses, then do so. Any excuse for... An abundance of righteousness is a good excuse. Even if it comes to you wasting what you think, you know, wasting your money on your family. Inshallah, I'll keep this brief. Uh, 
I know Sheikh Burhan will be giving a message for Eid, but I have my very own message as well. I won't interfere with the message of Sheikh Burhan, inshallah. Please listen to his messages. His words are, you know, mashallah, from the heart, and they go directly to the heart. But I, I also wish to say a few things on the day of Eid after Sheikh Burhan speaks. So it, please, uh, you know, engage with that. If you, <clears throat> if you don't have the ability to engage with it live, then inshallah, I will send it to you via email and via the WhatsApp list that I have whoever I have on, on WhatsApp. Until then, until we meet again, make the most out of the last few breaths, I would say, of the month of Ramadan, because tomorrow is possibly the day of Eid, and tonight is the possible night of Eid. And if we get an extra day of the month of Ramadan, don't say, oh man, another day of fasting. Don't say that. Say, Alhamdulillah, I got another day of the month of Ramadan. Uh, and take it as an opportunity to be really, Forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his ridha, for his happiness, which is a bigger reward than Jannah, as I mention all the time. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for perpetual afiyah. Wa akhiru da'wana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa li tukmilu al-iddata, wa li tukabbiru Allah ala ma hadakum, wa la'allakum tashkurun. Fulfill the remaining portions of the month of Ramadan, and glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he guided you to do so, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So you may be thankful to Allah. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ